a lot of people think that writing a report is quite a scary task. And it's understandable. Because a lot of the people who go in for the Cambridge Advanced English exam don't really have much practice in writing reports. They've never needed to do it. Maybe they're still students at school and you don't have to write formal reports like this when you're at school. However, for people with a more kind of critical mentality, people who like just going step by step by step through a piece of writing, the report is actually a very good um, task to choose in part two of the writing paper. So that's going to be the topic of this video, how to write a good report for the Cambridge English Advanced Exam. So let's start by looking at the nuts and bolts. And on a basic level, it's always important to read the task carefully. And as always, you'll be faced with a number of content points. So underline them in the rubric so you know exactly what you have to cover. Then when you're sketching out your plan for your writing, you'll know which areas you need to talk about, and that should help you choose your headings, as we'll see later on. And then you just write the report in about 220 to 260 words. So let's think about the target reader. Who is it that's going to read your report? Well, it's somebody who is looking for specific information. What does that mean? Well, uh, they want to know what happened. The big thing about a report is that they want information, the target reader wants information about something that happened in the past. They might want recommendations based on what happened in the past, but the overall idea is that you are reporting. That's literally it. And as you'll see when you watch the video on writing a proposal, reports look backwards, proposals look forwards. And that's really the difference. The target reader of a report usually doesn't have much time. They might be a busy tutor at a university, they might be somebody that you work for, usually a superior at work rather than a level colleague. So to help them get the information they want quickly, you want headings in your report. It's really a critical part of writing a report. The target reader doesn't need to be entertained, but they need to be inf informed as clearly as possible. So here, the more specific the information you can present, the better. If you can give them facts and figures, they will be a lot happier and much more fully informed. Where do you get these facts and figures from? You make them up. There's nothing in the exam rubric in the mark scheme that says that the examiners will take time out of their busy schedules to go and check the facts and figures that you introduce in your writing. So just bring them up, create them, make them up. It doesn't matter where you get them from, as long as you can use them creatively and constructively in your writing. So here's an example task. Imagine you've just completed a course in English studies at the college, and before you meet your tutor, you have to write a short report. And then we've got the content points coming up. Your report should include what you feel you have learned on the course, describe any problems you had, and suggest further improvements. So there are three content points. Couple that with our little introduction, and we come to a nice suggested structure. So with the headings, we want uh, our introduction. This doesn't need a heading, because obviously it's an introduction that leads into the task. And then the content point in order, you have the three, uh, link them wherever possible. And then the last point, which is the recommendation, well, this is the conclusion. So you don't need a separate paragraph to discuss your conclusion. You would just be repeating yourself. That would be kind of irrelevant. So keep it nice and short that way. And uh, just round it off with a good recommendation. So we want to write our report in formal or neutral register. Remember, this is somebody who is superior to us in some sense. So when we're, like, when we're writing formally, we have to remember that formal language is noun heavy and uses longer sentences. So for example, instead of saying, uh, I recently attended an English studies course, it was given by Professor Hardwick and it was at an advanced level. We count all of these verbs, attended, was given, was at an advanced level. We can rewrite it to say, I recently attended an advanced level English studies course given by Professor Hardwick. So one longer sentence, it's a lot more um, information dense, and that's really the critical thing 
in formal writing. So here is a skeleton outline of what the answer could look like. We start with our introduction, I recently blah blah blah, just as we've seen. And in the first time, uh, heading, we try to think of our own language to introduce the paragraph. We've got learning outcomes. So what were you able to benefit from? I've given you a little structure here, you would then fill it in with the rest. Then we were asked to talk about one of the problems you faced here. I've introduced the problem through the heading. The problem is time related. So we talk about that. And then I'm going to introduce some facts and figures here. A quick survey of the classroom shows that. Then I can make up a percentage. 78% uh, of the students uh, believe that the time given to them was too short. Something like that. I mean, something that the, the target reader can really hold on to. And then we were asked to give our recommendations, but instead of just saying recommendations, I've gone with the expression future improvements. It's just a different way of saying the same thing. But if you copy things from the rubric, you're not really given the credit for it. So it's always good to come up with your own alternative. So let's have a look at some of the different marking areas then. Uh, so. Cover all the content points in the rubric, add as much detail as possible. There's really no reason why you can't get full marks here. Having the headings and underlining the content points will hopefully mean that you've got two sources that you can kind of compare, you can check. Did you underline three things? Okay. Have you got three headings? Good. That suggests a nice lineup. But if you've underlined three content points and you've only got two headings, have you missed something somewhere? If you've missed something, go back and check, because you want to get those content points. So remember, again, I make this point often, and I think it's an important one. The more you uh, invent to put into your report, the better it's going to read. But you're not going to know the facts and figures for real. You'll have to invent them. So what about communicative achievement? Well, we want to keep the target reader fully informed. So we want one idea per content point. Now I know some students just kind of throw themselves at this task and they say, like, for example, the first content point here, what did you learn? Oh, I learned this, and I learned this, and I learned this, and I learned this. It's four points, might be great, but you don't develop any of them beyond that initial statement. So there are no complex ideas being expressed. It's much better to take one idea and build from it. So remember those headings, keep the language formal, so avoid phrasal verbs, avoid contracted forms. When you finish, read the whole report back through. Imagine that you were saying it to, uh, I don't know, a teacher that you don't really like, you know, somebody that you're not familiar with in that kind of uh, jokey rapport style way. Imagine a teacher who's always been very strict and severe and read it, imagining they are listening, would you change any of it? Because you'd be like, mm, I don't want to sound too friendly with this person. I don't really like them. Keep that mentality in mind and you'll be able to make your report seem much more formal. Now, what about organisation? Well, it's not just about using the right headings, although that does definitely help. Um, you also want to show linking words to, um, about gluing your sentences together, your ideas. Um, in terms of uh, sentence length, like I said, formal writing needs long sentences, but keep them readable. If you're not sure if it should be one long sentence, read it back to yourself. If you find that you can't read the whole sentence without <gasps> like this, the sentence must be too long. Maybe there are too many clauses there. You need to break it up. And then in terms of language, uh, this is a great chance for you to show off how well you can form nouns in your advanced vocabulary. But be careful with your spelling. Sometimes big words like recommendation are actually there in the rubric, so there's no excuse for spelling them wrong. And learn some set phrases that can be used to introduce some, uh, some statistics, like according to the majority of the students in my class. Sounds a lot better than most people most people said, something like that. So you can have that here ready. So, in this video, uh, we've looked at one possible recipient of a report. It's somebody's tutor. Can you think of somebody else that might ask you for a report? Write your ideas in the comments below. 
share what you know with the other people watching these videos. So that's it. That gives you a general grounding in how to write a report. You'll be able to compare this with how to write a proposal, see how the two line up. There are great options for paper two uh, in the writing because they're so similar. You get good at one, you should be good at both. So until next time, thank you.